Hello, I am Rajan from the Informatica Global Support Team. In this session, we will be discussing about creating and configuring the IBM MQQ along with the binding file and having that configured in the cloud application integration. This is the agenda that we have, creating a queue and the queue manager, creating the bindings file, uh, creating a process flow uh, on CAI, uh, which will be used to read uh, these messages from the queue and having the binding file on the queue configured uh, on CAI to read these messages. So uh, the queue can be created in the MQ Explorer. Uh, first, uh, a queue manager will need to be created, uh, then the server connection channel, and then a local queue. Uh, then uh, we can create a binding file. A binding file again will be created on the MQ Explorer uh, under the JMS administered object. Uh, you need to first create an initial context, which is the context uh, for the binding file. Uh, then the connection factory has to be created uh, depending on uh, the queue or the topic. Uh, queue connection factory or topic connection factory needs to be created. Transport type is the main uh, which will depend uh, on how the client will be connecting to the queues. The transport type needs to be set to MQ client uh, for any remote client uh, that will need to connect to the queue. Uh, if uh, the client is on the same machine where the queue manager is hosted, uh, we can select uh, the binding as the transport type. And uh, accordingly, change the connection properties uh, for the transport and the connection factory that is being created to set to the base queue manager, uh, setting the queue manager for the specific uh, binding file that is being created. Change the connection list uh, pointing to the server where the IBM queue is hosted and the other information and also the character set and the other properties can be uh, reviewed and uh, updated accordingly as an end. Then the corresponding uh, JMS destination uh, will need to be created and once all the binding uh, file configuration are done the binding file wherever uh, the mq explorer is hosted the machine where it is hosted the binding file will be generated uh, the binding file can be copied to the secure agent machine for use on the cai now on cai uh, before even configuring uh, the jms uh, a cai process has to be created which will be used during the configuration so it is better to have a cai process created first which will be used to read uh, these messages from the queue or the topic. Now, as part of the configuration uh, of the JMS queues, I go to the application integration console server configuration under the message service, uh, specify the connection factory, connection factory, connection username, and password, provide a URL depending on which OS it is, Linux or Windows, set the provider URL accordingly set the JND allocation to the destination uh, for the queue or topic. Ensure you set the listener class to the highlighted one there. And the default service uh, will be the process name that is created earlier uh, on CAI, which is used to uh, read the message uh, from the queue or topic. Uh, this is a sample uh, messaging service configuration for IBM MQ. We'll move on to a short demo here. So this is the MQ Explorer where the queue manager queues and the JNDI binding configuration will have to be done. To create a queue manager, just go to the queue manager new, create a queue manager, provide a queue manager name, create the server connection channel, specify a available port, and click on finish. Uh, for the ease of time, I have already created a queue manager, uh, but I do not have any queues created here. So uh, we'll see how uh, we can create a queue. But before that, uh, I'll want to show uh, how the JNDI bindings file will have to be created. To create a binding file, go to JMS administrator object, add an initial context, select a file system, choose the file system directory where you want to have the a binding file created. 
and click on finish. Once the file is created, ensure it is connected. Once it is connected, go to connection factories, add a connection factory. I would name that as TCNF. Uh, the type uh, will be queue connection factory or topic connection factory, depending on uh, if you want to use a queue or a topic. Uh, optionally, choose uh, the XA transactions. The transport type plays a major role uh, for the configuration of the bindings. Uh, if the transport type is set to bindings, uh, it is required for the queue manager and the JMS client, which is attempting to connect to the queue manager and the queue or the topic uh, to be on the same machine. If you're trying to access uh, the queue remotely from a machine where the queue manager is not hosted um, is on the same machine, you would need to change the transport type to MQ client. Go ahead and uh, create the, go to the next step because uh, I'm expecting my queue manager to be on a remote machine uh, different uh, than the client where, uh, which will be used to connect to the queue manager. Now go to the connections here. Uh, specify the base queue manager. So this connection list by default uh, is set as localhost. Ensure you change it to the host where the queue manager is hosted. I will have the host IP mentioned here. Optionally change the character uh, set ID, which is the encoding and other information as required. Uh, channel will be the server connection channel. If uh, there is a channel that you want to make use of, uh, which has already been created, or a different uh, channel uh, that you want to use other than the server connection channel, the default one, uh, you can go ahead and change them. The SSL configuration is something uh, that can optionally be configured. If at all, the queue manager uh, will need to be have uh, the SSL configuration enabled for the TLS secure communication. Click on finish to create the connection factory. Now if I go to destinations, uh, since this is a new binding file that I have created a uh, binding configuration, there is no destination available. Destination is nothing but the queue or the topic where the client will connect to to read or write messages. And uh, at the same time, I have also not created any queues. So uh, there is no corresponding queues or the JMS queue available. Now uh, on the binding file, there are two ways to create a destination, which is a, a JMS queue or topic. Uh, either can it can be created from the destination directly or from an existing queues. So I'll, I'll show you both the uh, options to create uh, the queues. So to create a destination, click on create destination, provide a name. The type will be Q. Uh, I can create a matching uh, MQ queue from uh, the uh, JMS administrator object, the binding that uh, has been created. I will select this option, which will also create a matching MQ queue. The queue manager will be the queue manager that I am in. The queue, this is the default uh, queue, local queue that uh, I'll point to. Default local queue. I'll review other options for the configuration. Everything looks good. The target client, if you see here, it is JMS. So that means uh, this queue that is created uh, is of uh, for the JMS uh, target client connection. Now this pop-up window that we have is for the MQ queue, which is the default uh, MQ queue that uh, we had selected to create a matching MQ queue. Just click on next, it will be a local queue. And we'll just review all these options fonts. Everything looks good. Click on finish. Okay. Okay. 
uh, I had earlier created the queue and I removed it. So probably that is the reason why uh, I did not show up or did not allow me to create the queue. Fine. I uh, will go ahead and create uh, uh, MQ queue directly. Say for an instance, we'll go ahead and create a queue, MQ queue, and name it as T1. Uh, the other way, the way we created the uh, MQ queue from a JMS queue, the same way a JMS queue also can be created from an existing queue. I'll select this option to create a matching JMS queue. I'll name my local queue or the MQ queue as T1. I'll review the properties for the queue. Everything looks good. Click on finish. The next option. Uh, the pop-up is for the JMS queue. I'll select the binding configuration and review the queue and the queue manager, which looks good. Rest everything looks good as well. And I click on finish. So if I go to the destinations, there will be a T1 that is created, uh, which will be a JMS queue. Now, if there is already a existing queue, if uh, there is already a queue manager that we are connected to and want to create a binding for an existing queue, I'll show that as well. Say for example, T2 is a queue that is already present in the queue manager uh, from an existing queue manager. You can just right click on that and create a JMS queue. Select the bindings. And click on finish. So this way, uh, JMS queue can be created from an existing uh, queue that is available on the MQ manager. Now, this is the binding file that had been created. I had selected uh, this JNDI bindings directory uh, to create my bindings file. So this binding file can be uh, copied over to the machine where the secure agent is hosted. Now we'll move on to the configuration uh, of this uh, binding file uh, once it is copied over to the secure agent machine on the CI side. Firstly, uh, as I mentioned, uh, there has to be a CI process created uh, to read this MQ queue or topic messages. So ensure uh, you create a CAI process to read the corresponding uh, message because this process name is something that we'll be using for the configuration. The JMS configuration uh, will be done on the application integration service console. Uh, go to the server configuration, uh, select the secure agent where uh, the process engine is running, the CAI process engine. Go to the system services. Under the system services, expand the messaging service. Click on this plus button, uh, which will pop up uh, the configuration page for this uh, messaging service. Provide uh, the name uh, for the messaging service. The JMS provider type will be IBM MQ series. Once we select this, uh, there will be a default uh, connection factory name and few other information popped up by default. Uh, since this is not the connection factory that uh, we have, uh, I'll change it to the connection factory that uh, I have created in the binding file. I'll provide the authentication uh, related information for the queue and the queue manager and the binding file. Rest everything looks good. Uh, I'll uh, change the provider URL to the uh, path where my binding file is placed on the server. Uh, say for example, if uh, that is placed on a Linux machine, uh, it should be file colon double slash followed by the path. If it is on Windows, you can just select uh, as a file colon slash the file path. The uh, Separator will be a forward slash in that case. The naming connection 
uh, initial factory will is the connection uh, context factory uh, which is set uh, as default we'll leave that as is we'll click on this plus button uh, to create uh, the queue and the listener uh, set the queue listener name to anything uh, as desired the destination location is the queue or the topic uh, where uh, we are intending to read the messages from the listener class is populated by default we will not be using this uh, listener class as I highlighted earlier we will be changing it to a different one I have copied it earlier listener count is uh, the number of listeners uh, that we want to have uh, the number of uh, threads or the number of counters of the count uh, that we want to have the queue monitoring to read the messages I'll leave that as one default service is the service CI process that uh, we have created uh, to read these uh, MQ message from the queue or the topic and if uh, exit transaction had been selected earlier you need to select this option here click on validate to validate the messaging server configuration once it is valid you can hit ok uh, to save this missing configuration I'll save this for the time being oh it is valid so now my information has been saved and uh, if there is already messages available in my queue uh, there will be a CI process that will be running uh, which will read the message from the queue and have it processed now uh, if there is no messages in the queue we can for test purpose we can just put a few messages test from for CAI I put a message test to I put two messages just refresh this one uh, the queue depth should show two so there will be two different CAI processes fogged uh, which will read these messages from the queue and process them that was all about the demo. Uh, this KB article uh, can be referred, which has detailed information on how the queue and queue manager, along with the binding file, has to be generated and how uh, the configuration on CI has to be done. And the CI guide also has information on the same. Uh, for as part of troubleshooting, there is a JMS test connect tool uh, which is which can be used uh, for any issues that uh, we come across with when configuring these uh, JMS uh, on the CEI side if there are any errors or if there are any issues this tool can be used a standalone tool uh, on on a different machine or on the same machine to test the connectivity to the queue and ensure the connectivity works fine we would love to hear feedback from you do write to us at support videos at informatica.com or tweeters at infosupport. I hope this session was helpful. Thank you.